Hi, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Leading with Giants TV. My guest this evening is Karen Martin, and she's the author of The Outstanding Organization, Generate Business Results by Eliminating Chaos and Building the Foundation for Everyday Excellence. Welcome to our show, Karen. Hi, thank you so much for having me. It's great to have you. I've been uh, following some of the stuff you do with all the uh, the books you've been written and the webinar. They're excellent ideas, and we'll mention those toward the end of the program where people can actually go see your website as well. Thank um, you. My pleasure. And then also we have Liston Sally. Welcome to our show. Hey, thanks. Excited to be here. Great. So let's dive right in, and I want to introduce Karen first of all. Uh, with with this, this is the book, the outstanding organization, uh, available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and what what are some of the other places you have the book at, Karen? Uh, all major, all the major booksellers, and it's actually sometimes you can find it in the bookstore as well. Okay, great. Well, let's talk about the book. Karen offers a toolbox for combating chaos by creating the organizational condition that will allow your improvement efforts to return greater gains. Proven, practical, and surprising, simple, Karen's system focuses on four key behaviors for operational excellence, clarity, focus, discipline, engagement, that once instilled into a company's DNA, open the door to sustainable growth, profit, and deeply engaged workforce. So let's talk about where we are in, in, the, in our economy. A lot of organizations and companies are just stuck. We, we're familiar with the engagement level or disengagement level that's out there, the statistics that 70% of employees are just disengaged in their companies, and, and companies are doing more with less now. So where, where, why do we have such a, an environment of, of just companies are not outstanding? They're stuck. Yeah, there's a fairly high amount of discontent out there. And what's interesting about the Gallup Q12 surveys that they do every year is that the numbers are not moving. I mean, for a decade now, the numbers haven't moved hardly at all. And so what I, I'm a trained scientist, so I look for patterns, I look for you know, commonalities. And what I see missing in most organizations, other than the very most you know, top performing companies, is that they lack these three essential um, psychological foundational pieces that organizations and, and individuals always want. And that is a need for great degrees of connection. And it's connection to not only people but also organizational purpose. Tremendous degrees of creativity. People are starved to be able to show their creativity at work. And, and this is the one that gets people kind of fired up, people need control. We are human beings. We are wired to have some sense of control. And in most organizations, especially when you get down to the front lines, they have very little control. And so there's a way to be, you know, not only keeping the strategy aligned up and down the organization and give people control over the daily work that they do. And that's a win-win for improving engagement. And what you, you notice in your book, or probably propelled you to, to do so, is that you notice that the improvement, the continuous improvement, Six Sigma, uh, TQM, really is not improving the performance of our organization. You've noticed that when that's kind of some of the things that propelled you to write the book, right? Right, yeah, and I think the problem with Six Sigma and the traditional total quality management approach is that it really wasn't a leadership engaged type of improvement methodology. And even people, you know, so the practice that I use is lean, L-E-A-N, lean. And uh, even people that are somewhat familiar with lean mistake lean to be solely a process design strategy. And it really is a business management strategy that has a heavy, heavy need for high levels of leadership engagement and shifting the way leaders lead. And it's, so it's you know, well beyond just process management. And when leaders shift the way they lead, then that leads to higher levels of engagement. Karen, kind of along those lines, some of these process management tools that they have out there, like you were speaking about, do you feel like they kind of treat employees as being part of a machine? You talk about you know, employees are not part of a machine. Do you think that that's part of the reason that they're failing? Well, to the degree that an organization has top-down command and control, you know, here's what you should do, here's how you should do it, that kind of command and control just does not work. And one of the things I love about the new generations coming into the workplace that older people and older leaders are a little freaked out about 
is that they are not going to tolerate that kind of, of environment. And I love the fact that they are not going to tolerate that kind of environment. You know, they need to be a active participant in deciding how work gets done. And after all, they are the subject matter experts, the people who do the work. So the, the leadership involvement piece of this is enormous, and it's one that's missing in most organizations. Uh, really, let's expand on that, uh, Karen, because I, I, I do see what you're talking about, and I see it in my organization, too, that there's a different way to lead and participate as a follower in, in this multi-generational um, in every company, you noticing that it's it's almost like a kind of an upheaval in many organizations where um, the the younger generation is setting the tone to become more social organization and it's it's more um, I don't like to say it's more about me, but it's creating meaning for everyone in their organization that they matter that each person can be a, just a difference maker as a CEO of a company, right? Right. Yeah, and I actually think that this it's all about me done in check is the best thing that's that's happening to businesses because you know what the old traditional way of we decide how work is done, we decide what we're how we're going to be operating, it, it just never has worked. I mean, that's why we have the level of discontent that hasn't moved in the 12 or 14 years that, that Gallup has been doing their survey. It's because that simply doesn't work. Never has, never will, and thankfully this generation is pushing the envelope and the buttons in a way that I think is finally going to get you know, organizations to understand what level of involvement employees need, want, and should have. Great. No, I'm, I'm glad you said that because part of, part of those four disciplines or four key behaviors you share, the clarity, the focus, and discipline and engagement, quickly, briefly walk us through it and how critical it is when someone is a leader and we have uh, leaders in our community here socially uh, with Lead with Giants, how can leaders, um, you know, let's go back to those four areas, how can one start, uh, and I know uh, just from noticing some of the conversation you have is that you really stress clarity is really important for a change catalyst to start. Tell us why clarity is, is it critical. Yeah, a clarity, I wanted to write a whole book on clarity um, and, and then write another book about the other three because it is the missing element. Uh, so a lot of leaders believe that everyone down to the front lines understand what, for example, the organizational purpose is, what, for example, the business goals for the year are. And when I talk with even all the way up to directors sometimes, they actually aren't very clear about what the mission is and they're not very clear about priorities. So you know, part of this work that we do with organizations is to get them to look at the full range of all the work they could do and get very, very clear on what they're going to work on right now, this fiscal year, and get that you know, communication and conversation going up and down the organization so that then by the time the final decision is made that yes, this is what we're going to work on, they've gotten the, the consensus and, and buy-in of everyone in the organization. It takes a little longer to do that kind of work, but then it accelerates the level of improvement and ability to actually achieve those business goals for the year because you've taken that time up front. And, uh, you know, share with us uh, just a quick example of where, and, and by the way, I do want to say that you should write a, an entire book on clarity. I think that would be amazing. <laughs> and, and the only reason I say this is because... Uh, as a leader, I think you have to be a great communicator and having clarity and, and really in your message because you write, um, you know, for those of you who haven't read the book, there's uh, talk about, Karen shares how emails, we spend too much time on construction of words and senses that we're, we're creating, kind of reinventing the will on, on communication. And I think clarity uh, would be a great book for, for any leader and communicator, so uh, it's great. But what I wanted to ask you is, um, you know, when, when people start their journey, they're, um, they're looking for clarity, and, and usually sometimes it's, it's done through those plaques on the wall, the, the mission statements and things like that, oh. and there's not someone there to really possibly really be passionate and show that model of leadership. What, what, do you, what is your suggestion there? Yeah, so there's a practice that we've learned from Toyota, and the Japanese word for it is Gemba, or Genba, is G-E-M or N-B-A, and it means going to where the action is, going to where the work is done. And it's a, a standard leadership practice in the work that we do, and it's different from the old 80s version of management by walking around, or MB, whatever that was, mm -hmm. W. 
Okay. Um, yes. And so what it is, it's very purposeful going to the, you know, everywhere, going out to the customer even, going to the front lines, and being very purposeful in what you're asking. So you're asking to learn, truly learn about the work and the obstacles that people are facing and how to be continuously improving to then inform the leadership team on what the priorities really need to be either that year or the next fiscal year when they're making the plans for the year. They're also learning what the employees are really feeling about the organization. And it has to be done in a pretty safe environment, and it takes a while for people to open up to leaders. And it takes a while, frankly, for leaders to feel comfortable being out there in the front lines because many times they're afraid they're not going to know the answers to the questions. And there's a way to prepare leaders so that they're not kind of hung out to dry. And there's a way that we can help the front lines understand that, in fact, leaders don't have all the answers, and that's okay. That's good, actually. You know, so that's it's a, a wonderful practice when organizations get good at it. They really soar. I, I really love what you say. I think I've always I'm always inspired by people when you sit in a meeting and you're not the smartest person in the in the room, and you're you're getting the you you have a beginner's mindset and you want to learn different things. And we've actually try that with our Hangouts too. Google Hangout is fairly new and so people will ask questions and you try to help and I think that that's kind of a similar example where you, I, I personally don't know all the answers with it and, and I try to say that as much as I've been doing them but it's, it's an interesting concept there. Yeah. Great. Well, uh, this is our first segment. We'll conclude here and we'll dive into the second segment with Karen in just a few seconds. Thank you so much. Thank you.